What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, you know I appreciate it. All that information is in the description box below. Make sure you go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks. Subscribe over there and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now let's get into this topic. All right, y'all. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hope everyone is doing well. Now, you all, I wanted to come back to this topic again because I wanted to read some of your comments on this story of Manachika Daniels. Manachika Daniels, you all can Google this story yourself. She is the mother in South Florida who left her child in a car while she went to work at a strip club for three hours near a busy uh, highway on uh, State Road. What was that university she was on? And now she is back in the news again for hitting her child with a hairdryer cord. And DCF came in and they saw the, the marks on the child. The investigator saw it too. They took pictures. And now the child is out of her custody. Now, a lot of you all didn't agree with some of the stuff I had to say on that previous video, and that's fine. We can agree to disagree. But what I want to do now is read some, not all, some of your comments. And the first comment I'm going to address is by Brother Keith. He, this is the comment that I pinned on the, in the comment section. He said, hey, Dawson, spot on, brother. I've seen it too many times as a police officer. And I think Keith is a police officer up in Georgia. And yes, Keith, brother, as a police officer, I know you have seen it all. Because usually when the kids are about to get taken out of the house, uh, most DCF workers go with the police escort. And you guys are usually on the scene. When this mother left her child in the car, they call the police officer. And Detective uh, Santiago was there with the child for three hours. Those police were out there by the car for three hours waiting to find to, to see where this child came from. And then the mother comes out of the strip club. So I, I appreciate the first responders, all of them, all of them. Now, Chastity Randolph said, if the aunt was able to get her when the mother was in jail, how come she couldn't watch the child while the mother was at work? Good question, Chastity. And my answer to that is maybe the aunt had watched the child so many times before and she told Manichika, look, this is your child. You need to take care of your own child. I have things to do. Maybe the aunt had to work. She had her own family and she was saying, look, I can't watch your child every night. Or maybe Manichika didn't even tell her aunt at all and then, or any of her family members that she was a stripper. And she had left the child in the car so many times, I'm just saying, and then this is the time that she got caught because the child got out the car and started wandering around that parking lot. So I don't really, we, I mean, the aunt, it's really not the aunt's responsibility to watch the child. But when a child is in DCF custody, they contact everyone. And whoever is on that family's list, the family list that has a clean background. And if that person is willing to take the child before they put them in DCF custody, that's the person the child goes to. That's my answer to that. And one commenter wrote, she said, I aged out of the Michigan foster care system as a ward of the court. There's more bad than good in the foster care nationwide. While the mother made some poor choices, <laughs> really poor choices. I reckon the dad is obviously a deadbeat absent. Can't go without responsibility. Shaking my head. Hopefully the child gets the proper support. And ma'am, my, my answer to you is hopefully the child gets proper support when she's taken out of the mother's custody for good. And that's how I feel about that. And of course, the foster care system, I never said it was the best. It's not all roses. No, it's not. And I did say in the video previously that we had some hiccups. But for you to say that the mother made some poor choices and one of the people in the comments got to you and they said, look, perhaps the dad was a pain sperm donor. Pretty common here. The mother just didn't make some poor choices. She made a grossly negligent decision that placed her child in grave danger. She placed her child in grave danger. That's what you all are missing because you're caught in your emotions. This lady left her child in a car for three hours near a busy highway, university highway in Fort Lauderdale over there in Lauder Hill. Cars going so fast. All the accidents that have happened there, the hit and runs that have happened on university. Google it. And after placing her child in grave danger in that particular situation, they gave the child back to her. And now she beats the child with a hairdryer cord that the child has marks all over her body. And you all are saying, well, where's the daddy? I don't know where the daddy. Does Manichika know who the daddy is? And here's the thing. The dad did not leave the child in the car for three hours. Take a breath. The dad is not charged. The dad did not beat the child 
with a hairdryer cord. The judge is not going to blame the dad. The judge is going to blame the parent that put the child in harm's way. Get out of your emotions. Take care of your kids. If you can't take care of them, don't have them. Now, being Marilyn Gale, shout out to being Marilyn, she's one of my super supporters here. She said, you better believe this wasn't the first time that this happened. I pray a reasonable relative takes the baby. And I agree with you, Marilyn. I definitely agree with you. Now, V Love, shout out to V Love. V Love came in the comment section and tried to give you women, some of you women who got emotional and some of the men too about this particular topic. She tried to shed some light as a black woman. And I thank you for that because some of them got in their emotions, V Love. V Love said the mother should never get the daughter back. Take a breath. This is a sister talking right here. V Love said the mother should never get the daughter back. The child could have been killed or kidnapped. That child is smart and brave. She was able to tell that her mother is abusive. Let that child have a chance at life to what she is destined to be. Keep her away from her mother. The mother has already shown that she is abusive and dangerous and she doesn't care about her daughter. I hate to see stuff like this. It's happening every second of the day i hope the aunt is a better parent thank you v love now k brown said shaking my head i do have sympathy for working women who can't afford child care but this woman is a bad mom all around and some people got in the comment section under her comments started saying replying to k uh, brown saying you know with the rising cost of child care it's getting hard out there and all this kind of stuff and then a brother got in there i think that's a brother or somebody got in there benji said your kids are your responsibility take a breath <laughs> Y'all don't like hearing this because I agree with Benji. Your kids are your responsibility. It's nobody else's fault that you got pregnant. Take a breath. Benji goes on to say it's not the taxpayer's responsibility to pay for your child care. Take the pill, wear a condom, or keep your legs closed. Wow, Benji, you going off. Have some accountability. Now, y'all, there are a lot of people around the world who agree with what Benji said, and I happen to be one of them. If you can barely take care of yourself, you don't need to have a child or children. And I had a, uh, a conversation with one of my supervisors one time when I was working with DCF because I would often tell my parents, yes, I would. Look, and I've told you all this on the show. When they have a bunch of kids, look, you already got three kids you can't take care of. You got four, you got five, whatever it was, because it was always over three. And now you're going to get pregnant again and have another child? You're, why would you burden yourself more? You, all, you can't take care of these kids you have now. And some of the women who were on my caseload, they thought if they kept having children, that it was going to keep a man. And I'm, hey, look, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm Dawson. I'm Dawson uh, on YouTube. I'm Dawson out there. I don't care if you get mad, if you never speak to me. If we don't speak in years, I'll tell you the truth. Oh, hey, I'll see you in the rapture. I don't care. Look here. I would tell my clients, you done had two kids by this dude. He, he's not acting right. He ain't going to stay with you. He don't want you. He's just there for sex. You are being silly by continuing to have sex with someone who's not going to take care of the child. But you want to be so emotionally attached to this man that you think by having kids is going to keep him here or keep him in your life. That man will give you three kids and walk out the door and never see you and them kids never again anymore. That's silly. Kids don't keep a man. And I got in trouble a lot. Because I used to tell my clients that. Because they always kept going down a downward spiral. they get out of the system, get off of DCF, and then they were back in the system again. Oh, Mr. Dawson, well, you know I was with you two years ago, but now, you know, I'm pregnant now again. Pregnant? You got five children, you can't, t this is the sixth child. Who's the baby daddy? Oh, I ain't with him no more. You just got pregnant. What you mean you ain't with him no more? Come on, y'all. Oh, Dawson, you picking it to people. No, I'm not. I'm trying to speak something into your life that'll click in your brain, that'll make you understand, woman. You don't have to keep having babies from these men who don't take care of you. They can't take care of their children. And you keep on, oh, I just need you. We got a big old dick. I don't know what to do. Turn around and run. That's what you do. I'm telling y'all, y'all wouldn't believe some of the things I hear as a social worker as I try to talk to these women, mostly women who are on my caseload, making these silly decisions. 
I know everybody want to have sex and all this kind of stuff, and we're adults. I know that. But if you're constantly doing something that's keeping you in a downward spiral, you can't blame anyone but you. You choose to keep having sex with this man. Oh, the sex is so good. Oh, my God. He got this. Get out of here with that nonsense. And you got kids that he don't want to take care of. And you got him on child support and he don't care because he can't keep a job. He running from pillar to post. I'm sounding like them. like my grandma used to say that mess. Running from pillar to post. Ain't got a what? What's the old saying they used to say? He ain't got a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out. And you keep having sex with him, producing these children. Come on, nah. And tell us over oh, the sex was good. Come on, now. You know, I thank God for the women who are on my channel and the women in the world who don't get caught up with dudes that just get them children and keeps them on a downward spiral. I thank God for you women. Y'all women need to start y'all YouTube channel and help some of these women who keep getting in this same situation where they have children they can't take care of. They're in the same situation where they're dealing with men. Oh, the sex is so good. He made me squirt and all this stupid stuff right here. But look at your life. Look at your life. Now, Ms. Blue said this, the toddler should not return to her mom. A lot of people don't understand that once you have children, your life is not your own anymore. You have to live for your child or children. I agree with you totally. A lot of these parents don't understand that. Your life is going to change completely when you have children. Now, if you want to go out and party and, you know, go from woman to woman, man to man, do that and be single and have no kids. Use protection. But when you decide to bring children in this world, your life is going to change and you're going to be held accountable for what happens to your child. You got to raise your child. SH put in the comment section, you're preaching. I adopted two of my nieces to keep them out of the system and decreasing trauma as much as possible. Shout out to you, SH. That's what I'm talking about. Good job. Good job. Blessings upon the Most High Child said, look, the black family unit is doing a great job of itself in breaking up its own families. This has been going on for so long, but we can't seem to find the solution to prevent bringing children into cursed situations. I don't like to say this, and I agree with you. I agree with you, Blessings. I agree with you. Born to Rain said, thank you for your commentary. I'm a post-adoption worker and worker as a foster parent slash adoption case manager. Everyone has an opinion, but no one wants to be the solution. It is frustrating. I, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Totally. Now stop playing with live said, it's quite easy to blame the mother for the child's neglect. But where exactly is the child's father? <laughs> Why doesn't the father ever take responsibility for the child slash children that they help create? And I told, this is what I said to stop playing in life. The father did not leave the child in the car or beat the child with a hairdryer cord. The judge will blame the parent that put the child in harm's way. I'm telling y'all, y'all got to get out of y'all emotion and look at the story. Who put the child in harm's way? Nowhere in those situations with leaving the child in the car or beating the child with a hairdryer cord was the father involved. Now, if we want to have a situation of does Manashika even know who the father is or where the father is, that's a totally different topic. This topic is on a mother who left her child in a car while she worked at a strip club and also later is back in the news for beating her child with a hairdryer cord. And if the mother is constantly putting the child in harm's way, that child needs to be taken out of the mother's custody. Now, if they find the father and the father wants custody or his family wants custody, that's fine. But at this point, the mother is unfit to have that child. Now, I know I'm triggering some of y'all because I'm sounding like them judges and them attorneys down there at the Department of Children and Family Courts. And that's OK, because I'm looking at the safety of that child. You all don't understand. Y'all got to stop thinking about, oh, the mama just trying to do what she need to do. She trying to make some money. If that child had gotten out of the car and went the other direction, she would have been hit by a car on busy university uh, highway drive there. Also, the child was wandering in a parking lot where there are men and women going in a strip club and there are bars and stuff around that area. You don't know. It could have been a pedophile in that parking lot. Could have took advantage of that three-year-old girl. 2.30 in the morning. You all have to get out of your emotions and feeling sorry for Manachika and, and encourage her to, to get her life together while her child is in the custody of someone else because she is an unfit mother. And I will never take that back. 
Now, F. Jones has done this before, her and some others. I think this is a, a woman or it could be a man. I don't know. I'm just keeping neutral. F. Jones puts, why are you so damn loud and obnoxious? <laughs> You're too darn dramatic. Why? And my thing to you, F. Jones, and the people who will put similar uh, comments in my comment sections, you all, I don't force you to watch this show. You watch this show because you resonate with something I'm saying. So when you click on that button, you know what you're going to get. I've been doing this for years. So if you don't like what you're hearing, if you don't like my presentation, you don't have to watch. Have a great day. All right, now Stephanie Campbell puts in the comment section, mind your business. She's not asking you for any assistance. <laughs> Oh, Stephanie. Stephanie, the child safety is our business, Stephanie. That's why we're that's why I'm doing this show. And she's not asking anyone for any assistance now because the child's not in her custody. And hopefully the courts have some sense and they will make sure the child will never be in her custody again. Have a great day, Stephanie. Now, pretty girl slot channel said, okay, the aunt should take care of her until the mother is able to take care of her. DCF is not the option because y'all system know better. I told you there was hiccup in the system, but pretty girl slot channel went on to say she put another comment. She said, wow, you so harsh. No pretty girl slot channel. I'm, <laughs> I'm not harsh. I am interested in the safety of that child. That's what I'm interested in. And we have evidence that the mother has put this child in harm's way in abusive situations, not once, but twice. OK, so if she continues to do that, she does not need her child. The mother has proven that she is an unfit mother. All right. Now, look, y'all, this video is getting long and I got to go. I'm off of this. Now, I'm just going to say this. You all, y'all know my channel. I stand up for the kids. I stand up. I'm a voice for the voiceless, you all. So if you want me to feel sympathy when a mother or a father, they're not doing what they're supposed to do as a parent, you all are on the wrong YouTube channel. I stand up for the children. You all know that. And I'm passionate about that. And I don't, I don't regret it. I ain't taking nothing back. So look, there are a lot of stories that I have to cover within the upcoming weeks. A lot of you are sending in stories and stuff I'm seeing in the news that I want to talk about. So we got a lot of stuff to do, you all, all right? Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. But please, please, please take care of those kids. Peace.